This plant right here is called mugwort, uh, and it's in the daisy or aster family. It's very closely related to wormwood that uh, is used for years to make absinthe, the uh, extremely psychoactive drink that was very popular among the artist community. Uh, expressionists like uh, Van Gogh supposedly was a uh, absinthe addict. And this uh, plant mugwort right here, which is Artemisia vulgaris, um, has some of the similar compounds in it. And it's easy to identify because of these frilly leaves and the strong smell that it has. If you rub the leaves, it has a, a very sort of resinous or piney kind of smell. Um, and that's really the best thing to go on because um, you might notice that the leaves from different parts of the plant have slightly different shapes to catch the light in different ways. So these uh, leaves down by the base are uh, a little more full, uh, not so spindly, because um, they're catching the more dappled light towards the base of the plant. And as you get towards the top, they get uh, skinnier and skinnier with deeper lobing. Um, and sometimes on the very tops of very mature plants, there'll just be a single, uh, single one of these uh, thin leaflets. Um, so if you see it and uh, it looks like you're not totally sure if it's a, if it's the right plant, uh, just rub the leaves and and you'll know it's the same thing. There is one other plant uh, that grows in Central Park that has a similar uh, smell, and that's Epizote. Uh, this plant right here, um, uh, which is also called Mexican tea. Um, and you can see that the leaf shape is much simpler. Uh, just a, a simple leaf shape with some toothing on the edge. But it doesn't have any of the lobing that the mugwort does. Um, so if you smell that, that piney resiny smell and it's, it's lobed, it's a mugwort. So mugwort um, is used in several ways. Um, uh, you can have a tea of it to uh, increase your dreams and make your dreams very vivid. Um, you can also just put it directly under your pillow and just the, the smell of it is often said to make vivid dreams. And just have to give the caveat that it's not necessarily good dreams, but just vivid. So if, uh, if it winds up giving you nightmares, don't blame me. Um, uh, it's also used in acupuncture uh, if uh, so there's a technique called moxibustion where they put a block of dried uh, mugwort on the end of the needle and they light it on, uh, on fire. It's like an incense. It's not actually uh, on fire, but it's just smoldering and that adds heat to the, to the needle and, and is supposed to change the flow of chi in acupuncture. Um, and there are a uh, few people who use it uh, in foods. Um, I've seen uh, mochi, the Japanese rice cakes that were flavored with mugwort uh, as well. So it's a good after dinner treat that's also going to give you some uh, dreams of fairy plums and things too. Um, and the. Uh, uh, and you'll find this growing in practically every abandoned lot uh, in New York City, in the parks all over the place. Um, although we were, sort of, we were trying to find it today, but we didn't have luck till just now. Um, and uh, it'll crop up everywhere, and it's, it's around uh, most of the year, except for when there's snow everywhere, so it's pretty easy to find.